Kaisareta Koskinen is head of the climate department of uh, Helsinki municipality and Ina Oilinki is uh, responsible for the international relations earlier for the whole city and now for uh, the special uh, climate department. How are the governmental competences regulated within the municipalities and the regional and national levels in Finland? Well, the thing to understand about Finland is that the municipalities are very powerful. So uh, Helsinki is the biggest employer in Finland, has over 40,000 people working for it, has a, a budget of 3.5 billion euros and takes care of almost all of the services to citizens. Basically, the state only takes care of the, the army and the police but almost everything else is done by the, by the municipality. Regions in Finland don't really have um, a lot of roles to play. So it's, it's the municipalities that are closest to the people and then the state doing some of the things. You are responsible for the climate politics of Helsinki. How independent are you from the political parties? And uh, if you are not totally independent, but uh, bounded to the political decisions, then are the political decision makers, like the mayor or the majority of the deputies, uh, supporting your uh, fact-based decisions to be implemented into the politics? Yeah, in, um, we are a civil servants. So we are basically partly independent from the political parties. But the political parties, they are leading the city, so they are making the decisions. And of course, through that, we are bounded to the political decisions. From the climate perspective, at the moment, the political parties, the majority of the political parties are supporting the climate calls. So it's, it's, it's a very good situation, but you know, we never know, so maybe a next uh, port, a uh, next council, you know, change the, the targets and, and then, you know, we have to live with it. How is the climatic situation of Helsinki and what steps have you done? How were these, effects, these decisions affecting the society uh, and uh, also the uh, climate harm reduction. How can we eventual political mistakes uh, avoid it uh, or correct it if already done? Yeah, last year our emission uh, raised due to the Ukrainian war, but before that uh, or since that, you know, we have been able to decrease the emission. Uh, we have been decreasing about one third comparing to the year 1990 uh, and you know per resident you know we have decreased even more so uh, emission has gone down about 50 percent per person comparing to year 1990. The biggest reasons for this decrease is um, that the district heat production is cleaner the electric, uh, electric production in, in Nordic countries is getting cleaner very fast and then also there is less uh, climate pollution from the cars. They are the main reasons. Uh, our department is basically taking care of the climate and that's the main target we are focusing on. But of course, you know, we are trying to maximize the co-benefits. So for example, you know, we are uh, focusing a lot on the energy efficiency and it's uh, very good for the residents because, you know, by increasing energy efficiency, you are decreasing the price of the energy the people need to spend. How are the international cooperation agreements uh, of Helsinki and its twin cities, uh, especially in the climate related issues, but also in the other uh, cooperation uh, like uh, culture and uh, other uh, things uh, where the cities are connected? Well, uh, Helsinki is part of a lot of uh, different international networks and we don't actually have twin cities, uh, but that would, that's due to the nature of being a capital city and capital cities in general uh, have a very natural way of collaborating. So, so we've been part of the EU capital cities network and, and then there are other uh, uh, 
different networks that are just for capital cities, but then we are also part of, of many global and, and European level networks. And for climate, we've, we've been part of ICLE for a long time, uh, Climate Kick and uh, Carbon Neutral Cities Alliance. So, so there are specific networks for climate work and then very many uh, more general networks for culture. There are uh, different ones and so on. But since we have like uh, uh, four different sort of like big departments in the city, uh, one is for culture and sports, so, so they take care of their own networks uh, for the urban planning that where we work. Uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, there, there are different uh, things that we are doing and, and so on. So, so, so it's, it's about what your uh, main focus in the city is that, that you kind of like working on, the, on those networks. And then there are some more general level networks that the city is kind of like keeping an eye on. on uh, city's position in, in EU level and, and, and things like that. So, so where there's more lobbying about policies on cities and funding. How are the current uh, Russia-EU tensions affecting Helsinki locally? Well, in the beginning of the war, it was very worrisome uh, because uh, and, and, and there's been quite a lot of analysis later uh, on about if Kiev had fallen in, in the beginning of the, of the war, uh, it would have meant a lot more difficult situation for Finland as well. Uh, but since Ukraine has been uh, quite successful in, in the war, if you can say it like that, uh, it became uh, less stressful for us and we were also able to join NATO, which is now giving us a, 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 a different kind of position and, and, and more security because there's a bigger alliance behind it. Uh, on the other hand, we do have the longest uh, border with Russia, over uh, 1300 kilometers of land uh, border, which of course, uh, especially in the beginning, meant that, that we were very worried about that border. And, uh, but, but the other thing that changed, not just the, how, how Ukraine has been fighting, was also that we kind of, uh, in the beginning of the war or before the war, thought that the Russian troops were way more powerful than they seemed to be. So, so uh, it's also been a kind of a learning experience about how, how, the, how the Russian troops actually are doing and, and how scary they, they feel. So, so right now it's more peaceful. Uh, also, we had a lot of uh, Russians coming in uh, through the border in the beginning, uh, going also to other EU places because we were the kind of the, the easiest place to cross. But that's sort of stopped a lot. We still get some some people uh, coming over, but but it's it's been more like tourists. Um, they come in and and, and leave. Uh, we also probably have some like opposition people, but I think that they mostly have gone to, to like a, a bit further away places than, than Helsinki. What are the perspectives for the future, also in a climatic aspect uh, and also generally for Helsinki uh, as a city? Well, I'll, I'll say one thing before that, because I forgot to say it in, uh, for, uh, um, about Ukraine. So, so one of the things that what, what Kazaret was mentioning, that, that uh, the emissions went, down, went up last year uh, because of the war in Ukraine, because of, of uh, we were using the land gas coming from, from Russia and, and, and that's all. So all of a sudden we had to figure out new ways and had to burn more coal uh, because of that. And, 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 and so it was kind of like the energy crisis made us uh, use more uh, processes and, and, and uh, materials that, that we were already like in the process of getting out of using. So, so but there was this kind of crisis situation that, that, that led to it. Um, but otherwise for Helsinki, I think, you know, as a, as a capital city, as a, so, so in Finland, the cities have a right to tax and uh, they can also tax the headquarters of companies and, and Helsinki, a lot of companies are, are situated in Helsinki, which means that we get quite a lot of uh, tax euros uh, through that and are, are a, a, a rich city, you can, you can say. So uh, every year we have about 500 million euros that, that we don't even have to spend. and. Uh, and, and so we are able to plan quite a lot 
and, and there are other strengths that we have. We own about 60% of the land and 20% of the buildings, which gives us a lot of power to change things. And this is also like a, kind of like where we get the uh, possibility to actually do impactful uh, climate solutions in the city because we, we kind of like have the ability to change things in a big way because of those kind of strengths that, that we have as a city. And that's why we're hoping kind of like, like that we can actually be the example for other cities also about, about these things because we don't have the difficult national situation and, and so on. So the government is not telling us to do something differently, but, but we have the power to act. Yeah, and, and climate-wise, you know, we are the biggest sources of emissions are uh, heating and traffic, and we are focusing on those areas. And uh, Helsinki is growing very fast, so there are more people coming in. So we are also constructing a lot, and the emission from the construction is our third priority. So it's uh, basically a traffic, heating, and construction we are going to focus in future.